point out, you know, to give you an idea as far as how, you know, we always say housing first, right? We can't do anything. We can't work at a job. We can't go to school. Um, with We can't do anything without having housing first. And so that's a priority. And to give you um, kind of some background as far as how much this affects your livelihood and your health, how housing affects your health, a person who was white could live across the street from someone who was black. And based on housing and life expectancies, the white person has a 20 year life expectancy more than the black person. Let me repeat that. A white person has a 20 year extended life expectancy than a black person. And that has to deal with poverty, it has to deal with housing. And that's why it is so critical to have this racial equity part a part of whatever comes out of any plans that are designed to address the affordable housing crisis. And we know that there are many aspects of this trust fund that will change people's lives. And it will have an, a material change um, in a very positive way, both for individuals and families and for development as well. And this is a development opportunity for folks, for developers all throughout our Cincinnati, all 52 neighborhoods. So when people say housing for everyone is, is important, it's uh, not true. There's already too much luxury housing out there. There's already too much housing that would be available for those folks. So there's you know housing that's just sitting vacant because there aren't people that can afford that. And then if we look to the right side where you see the bar graph, you can see that overall, this is it's not that great, right? 16% of people are severely cost burdened, that's the bottom bar there, and 18% are cost burdened. So cost burden means you're paying 30% or more, the pink is 30% or more of your income towards your housing, and the dark red is where you're paying more than 50% of your income towards your housing. So black people in Hamilton County nearly half of all black people, or we could say half of all black people, 26% plus 23% is 49%, pay more than 30% of their income towards their housing. Y'all, we have to address this now. And the people have said it. Over 9,000 folks signed the ballot that says, yes, we want affordable housing now. And the city is saying, no, well, let's get a study together. Y'all had all this time. You established the, the trust fund back in 2018. So you had three years to do a study. You had more than enough time to do this. In the meantime, folks have died. You know how I know? Because I get the phone calls. Or I have to call the coroner's office to check to see who's gone, right? The city doesn't do that. Relatives and friends of the folks who are most affected have to do that. We need to really understand the depth of this problem. And I don't think folks do. And so people look at me like, why are you so angry? Why are you so, because y'all, this could be you. It could be you. So what we need to do is we need to one, work together, right? So we need people to come out and be part of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. We need people to go door to door. We need you to change your frame on your Facebook picture. We need to, you know, you to be sharing our information with everybody because this is ultimately a team project. It's important that we really understand what is happening and, and take action. We now. know, Mona, that we are in an affordable housing crisis or just a housing crisis, right? So that exists um, for a lot of folks and specifically here in Hamilton County, we know that we're 40,000 units short of affordable housing. And there are 28,000 households in the city of Cincinnati who are paying more than 30% of their income towards their housing. So they, they do not have affordable housing. And that is an issue because those families are not able to participate in community life. Um, and they are not able to uh, invest for their future. They're not able to send their kids to the best colleges or even to college um, because they are um, 
rent burdened or are cost burdened in their homes. Um, and then this also puts them on the precipice of the experience of homelessness. This housing crisis is hurting all of us, but it's especially hurting black folks. So I just want to keep that in mind. And, and with this plan, we need to ensure that racial equity is, is considered throughout this. So we can't just look at something as a bunch of numbers on a paper and say that this is the truth, right? We all right. know that there are nuances. We know that Cincinnati is a very special place. I mean, we're right between the South and the North. We have a very specific history that we talk about in our tours that we do through the Homeless Coalition. So we know that we cannot just reduce this to a uh, bunch of numbers, right? But when we know that there's 28,000 units shortage, and then an economics professor comes from UC and says, wait, I don't think the problem's that bad. It's just 8,000 units. What we have to do is we have to look at their methodology. You know, we could look at them as an individual, and we've done that in the past. We've said, look, this economics professor writes books that essentially erase race out of the picture, right? So they omit it. And we, when we omit race and we omit anti-Black racism specifically, that is a function of white supremacy. So whether the person or the individual or the institution is like, hey, we're, you know, we're acting in white supremacy, it doesn't matter when uh, they're omitting the impact of race and anti-Black racism from their study. So what that means is, is that he doesn't consider anything in terms of the concentration of poverty within the city. He doesn't consider anything about historic or, or contemporary anti-Black racism that exists. Understanding that is really important because if we base our policy on white supremacist economics uh, theories, then we are functioning in an anti-Black environment. And that is very dangerous for a city that is more than 40% Black. And thinking about race equity, right? And looking at these developers, there's a racial equity lens that can be applied to that, right? So even, you know, we, we want, don't get it twisted. We, we know we need development. We just want it done right. So we want to make sure um, that when we're thinking about this and we're hearing in the news coming out the next week that, oh, city council is doing this and they're doing all this work, um, that we're not hoodwinked into thinking that $34 million is going to come into, from HUD and go into affordable housing. And when the city uses white supremacist e economics and say that it's just about supply and demand, and that if we increase market rate housing, it's going to increase affordability, we're going to see a lot of that Section 108 money going to market rate housing, going to businesses, going to parking garages, and it is not going to go directly to affordable housing. So just keep your eyes on that as we move forward. And that's why it's so key to pay attention to the fine print, right? Pay attention when the city's really saying, oh yeah, we're about affordable housing. And we know that that's not the case because if that was the case, then they would not be pushing so hard against this issue. And coming up with all these backdoor things to basically gaslight us. If this was a, a solution to uh, the housing crisis and to homelessness, we would be happy. Trust us. Uh, we, I say it all the time. I am working to get fired. I want this crisis to end. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Mona and Mark, Mark Show. Show. Uh, welcome everybody. Please share this video. Early voting has already begun and people have already voted yes on issue three. Ah! We're give some exactly. If you want to early vote, you can do that today, a weekend before the May 4th election. You can go to the Board of Elections. Uh, maybe there'll be some souls to the polls who believe that we can fund our affordable housing trust fund to create affordable housing and respond to the need that we have here in Cincinnati. Yes, I'm excited. Can't wait. It's still very important to vote yes on issue three. So who controls the money? With issue three, it is community control. The city itself can't spend the money in the affordable housing trust fund. The funding is dedicated with issue three. 100% of the money uh, minus the administrative fee, but 100% of the money will go to zero to 60% AMI. Only way we can ensure that funding goes towards affordable housing is if we vote yes on issue three. Right. And it's so important that we have that dedicated funding stream, right? 
or that restriction because, uh, again, we could say it's it's for affordable housing, but if it's not restricted, then it can be used for luxury housing. It can be used for garages. It can be used for um, basically what is called trickle down economics, where they're going to go ahead and build market rate housing and then say, oh, well, don't worry. The trickle down effect of, market, of purchasing market rate housing, it'll come eventually we've been waiting too long that's not going to work we have known we have seen it we have researched it to know it has happened in other cities and you know it's based on information issue three ensures that anyone who works and gets funded in any way through the affordable housing trust fund will receive a livable wage uh, and so that it's equity focused right so we are looking at it um, from the perspective of who needs the most help they will be the ones that will benefit from this. So it's really important for us to keep in mind that the governance, the dedicated funding, and the housing protections are the key difference between issue three and voting yes, and just either voting no or not voting at all, which is just gonna let the status quo go through where the mayor will be able to control the board. The board will be made up of mostly for-profit folks, and those for-profit folks can use the funding that is not restricted to affordable housing, and they can use it to build what they want. So we want to make sure that we keep in mind that issue three is about making sure that we as a community have control and we are directly impacting the affordable housing crisis today. Is who is behind the no on issue three? The premise that they're using is a faulty premise. So they're using the premise that the city would have to cut $50 million from its general operating budget to fund the affordable housing trust fund. And that's just simply not true. So what we want to make sure is people know is that there, are, we know that there are multiple sources of funding. There are going to have to be multiple streams of funding that come in to fund the affordable housing trust fund. And so unfortunately, those organizations and people have the wrong idea about the impact of what the affordable housing trust fund will do. And that is because of that city manager uh, report that came out. We know that this city manager report came out basically just to say if they took out $50 million, if they did a $50 million general fund reduction, what would that look like, right? They weren't asked if issue three passes, how would we fund the affordable housing trust fund? Mona, who is behind the yes on issue three? So it is a coalition of coalitions of coalitions, which means that it's not just an individual that decided to come up with this. It is groups of groups of groups of folks. So it includes the homeless coalition. And, you know, we have over uh, 60 to 70 agencies and individuals who are part of our, our coalition, including the Peasley Neighborhood Center, Over the Rhine Community Housing, um, Cincinnati Health ne Network, Caracol. Um, and then Mark is also a coalition of agencies, and that is the Metropolitan Area Religious Coalition of Cincinnati, which has about 14 members and diverse faith backgrounds. So you have the Baptist, Catholic, Episcopals, Jewish, Islamic, Quakers, um, who are saying, yes, they want affordable housing. They realize the importance uh, of this. And then we have AHA, which is the uh, Affordable Housing Advocates. Um, it, one of our sister agencies, and you know, they have a. It's a coalition of of folks as well. So, um, wow, it's the NAACP, it's the Urban League, it's quite a few agencies um, and individuals that are really saying yes, we need affordable housing, and we need it now. We can't be complacent, y'all. We got to do something, and voting yes is doing something. It blows my mind that they would do a press conference to say that we are not putting any money towards affordable housing, zero to 60 AMI. The point is that it's an emergency. Um, it's life or death. It's critical. It, it really is. So it's, it's important that we get out and vote yes so that we can um, start handling this appropriately. A no vote or not voting is saying that you want the mayor to control the funding, that you want they're not to be dedicated funding to, towards affordable housing. Like if we don't do anything, 
we will not have funding dedicated towards affordable housing, period. And that is a big deal. So if you want funding to go towards affordable housing, uh, city funding, then you have to vote yes. Um, if you want to make sure that there is a governance that is not controlled by the mayor, but is controlled by community organizations and people who have been working on affordable housing, then you have to vote yes. If you want to make sure that there are livable wage jobs that come out of the affordable housing trust fund, you have to vote yes. And if you want to make sure that there are housing protections, making it so that there's just cause eviction, meaning that people can't just get evicted because they want a whiter or more wealthier group of people coming in, um, then you have to vote yes. So it's about the governance, it's about dedicated funding, it's about livable wages, and it's about housing protections. And that's how we know we're gonna end homelessness. So that would be my plea. Um, now we're gonna talk a little bit of drama here about what happened yesterday at this press conference. We've seen the city trying to respond and act like they're doing something. But what they're doing is not dedicating funding to zero to 60% AMI to the families who need it the most here in Cincinnati. And we're gonna hear a little bit from the city manager in a moment. What she just said was, is that there is no dedicated funding towards affordable housing and that the metric of what they're gonna consider affordable um, goes up to 80% AMI, um, which is a problem as well, because again, zero to 60% AMI is actually affordable. 80% uh, or 60 to 80% is workforce up to about 120% AMI. What they announced yesterday says that there's no city money for affordable housing. None of the funding is restricted to zero to 60% AMI. They're gonna ask this the federal government for a loan and they may or may not get that loan. Not a single dollar has been pledged by a private organization. There is no ideology change. So if you heard the city manager say that 51% of the funding will be dedicated to 80% AMI or less, what that's saying is that 49% of it can go towards luxury housing, it can go for parking garages, it can go to create businesses. And we know because that's section 1808 loan, we've done that before, the city's done that before. So they're really not even announcing anything new. So the priorities do not have to be in line with the need, right? We know the need is zero to 60% AMI, people making up to about $35,000 a year here in the city of Cincinnati. So the, the, the board that they put together um, that the mayor can pick can say the priority is 80% to 120% AMI, and then that's where they focus their money. So we need people to vote yes on issue three, or else we will continue to have no livable wages. We will continue to not have uh, housing protections that, that are dire in need, um, especially as gentrification has, is displacing our, our historically black communities. And there is no innovation here. Um, and it just focuses on trickle down housing. This idea if we build luxury housing, that the uh, housing affordability will increase across the board, which does not work. Most of the funds could literally go to build luxury housing. There's no restrictions on the funds um, the, to create zero to 60% AMI. We need everybody to encourage your friends, your family, please go out and vote yes on issue three so that we can put at least $1 towards affordable housing. It just blows my mind that they would do a press conference to say that we are not putting any money towards affordable housing, zero to 60 AMI. So the takeaway is we need a comprehensive housing protections. I get it. When you're paying a thousand dollars for a 400 square foot and you still got the pink tile from 1962 in the bathroom, um, you know, cosmetics, but also functionality is so important. And so um, I get it. You are right on there, Shirley. So I just want to highlight and thank you for pointing that out. So we want to make sure that when we say we're dedicating $50 million a year towards affordable housing, that that goes to the people who need it the most, which is zero to 60 AMI, people making about $35,000 a year and less. And we can have stronger, more stable communities by voting yes on issue three. Go ahead and do it today. Share yes. this video. Vote yes, and we will see you all soon. Uh, check out uh, Cincinnati Action for Housing Now.